Hello friends, welcome to the Viva Voice of Anatomy. Today we will discuss the stomach. Now, the stomach is also known as a gastric or a venter, from which the terminology used for the stomach is a gastric. Now, the you can define the stomach as a large muscular organ, which is uh, from the widest and the most distendible part of a GI tract. Now, the stomach is connected. Above to the lower end of the esophagus and below to the first part of a duodenum. The stomach is located in the left hypochondrium, epigastrium, and the umbilical region. The shape of a stomach is a oblique J shape. It lies obliquely and it is a J in the shape. The size is uh, the size is approximately 25 centimeter. And its capacity is 30 ml at the time of the birth, increased to the 1 liter at the time of the puberty and increased up to more than the half to 2 liter in the adults. Now we first see the external feature of a stomach. Stomach is having the two orifices, that is a cardiac orifice, pyloric orifice, two curvature or the border, lesser curvature, the right border, greater curvature left border and the two surface anterior surface and the posterior surface first talking about the orifice the upper orifice is known as a cardiac orifice the cardiac orifice joined by the lower end of a esophagus here there is a physiological evidence of a sphincter cardiac sphincter but you cannot demonstrate the anatomically it means you cannot feel the firm nodule like structure over here but there is a physiological sphincter is there means the this sphincter will remain closed all the time but it will open only when the food uh, reaches to the lower end of the esophagus and it will open now the pyloric orifice pyloric orifice lies at the lower end of the stomach here the pyloric orifice will contain the pyloric sphincter which is known as a pylorus now on the surface of the pylor uh, pylorus it is demarcated by the circular group and the pre-pyloric way. There is a physiological as well as the anatomical evidence of the pyloric sphincter. You can feel here the form nodule as a pyloric sphincter. So this is about the orifice. Now talking about the border or the curvature. The first is a laser curvature or the right border. The laser curvature extends from the cardiac orifice up to the pyloric orifice. It provides the attachment of a laser omentum. Now in the most dependent part, in the lower part, it presents the nodes. This is known as an angular node or an incisura angularis. Now talking about the greater curvature or a left border. Greater curvature <coughs> or a left border starting again from the left side of a cardiac orifice up to the lower end of a pyloric orifice. It provides the attachment of a greater momentum. Now, here in the upper end, it is separated from the left border of a esophagus by one nodge which is known as a cardiac nodge. Now, the last two surface, anterior surface facing antero superior and the posterior, posterior surface it facing posterior inferior. So, this is the external feature of the stomach. Now we see the parts of the stomach. Stomach is sub, it is divided into two parts which is subdivided again into the four part. First the two division. Stomach is divided into two parts by a line which is drawn downwards and the left from the angular nodes or incisura angularis. So the upper part is known as a cardiac part and the lower part is known as a pyloric part. Now the cardiac part is again divided by one horizontal line which is drawn from the cardiac nodes towards the left. So the upper dom shaped small part is known as a fundus of stomach and the lower part is known as a body of the stomach. Now the part of a pyloric, pyloric part. The pyloric part is also divided into two parts by one inconstant sulcus which is present along the greater curvature of the stomach here somewhere over here into two parts the pyloric antrum which is 7.5 cm long and the pyloric canal which is 2.5 cm long. 
so these are the part of the stomach the fundus body pyloric entrum pyloric canal now we see the relation of the stomach stomach is having two relation two types of the relation the peritoneal relation and the visceral relation first we see the peritoneal relation now the stomach on the both the side anteriorly and the posteriorly covered by the fold of the peritoneum now these two peritoneum along the laser curvature will join to form the laser omentum of the stomach on the greater curvature these two fold will unite to form the greater omentum of the stomach additionally the fold of the peritoneum near the fundus of the stomach will unite and get attached to the spleen hilum of the spleen and form the gastrosplenic ligament posteriorly near the cardiac end of the stomach somewhere over here this two fold uh, the two peritoneum fold will unite to form the gastrophrenic ligament which is attached above to the diaphragm now the part of a posterior surface of the stomach cranial to the gastrophrenic ligament is lies in the direct contact with the diaphragm which is known as a bare area of a stomach now we see the visceral relation towards the anteriorly the anteriorly stomach is related to over by the liver the transverse colon the anterior abdominal wall now see the stomach is lies obliquely from the left side to the right side so on the left side it is covered by the left lower ribs and the intercostal space now over here between the left costal margin and the left lower edge of a lung the space lies over the stomach is known as a trough space the important of the trough space is that when you do the percussion on this space you can feel the resonant node because of a fundus which is lies below the trough slopes and the fundus will contain the air so you will feel the resonant load normally now due to pleural infusion or the splenomegaly this space is covered by the fluid and the spleen so at that time you can feel the dull node so this is the anterior relation of the stomach now the posterior relation the structure forming the posterior relation will form the stomach bed now the structure forming stomach bed are a diaphragm the left kidney left suprarenal gland transverse mesocolon the splenic flexure of a colon the pancreas and sometimes the splenic artery so these are the relation of the stomach now the blood supply the stomach is supplied by the arteries of a celiac trunk or branches of the uh, celiac trunk and it is arranged along make an anastomosis along the greater curvature of the stomach and the lesser curvature of the stomach okay first uh, along the artery of a, uh, along the lesser curvature of the stomach the branches of the celiac trunk the first direct branch of the celiac trunk the left gastric artery and the right gastric artery now the right gastric artery is a branch of the proper hepatic artery which is a branch of the common hepatic artery and the common hepatic artery is a branch of the celiac trunk now along the greater curvature it is supplied by the right gastroepiploic artery which is a branch of the gastroduodenal artery and the gastroduodenal artery is a branch of a, a, com, a pro, common hepatic artery left gastroepiploic artery which is a branch of a splenic artery and the splenic artery is a branch of a celiac trunk now the upper fundic area is supplied by the short gastric arteries which is also a branch of a splenic artery so this is the arterial supply of the stomach venous drainage the stomach is vein the veins from the stomach is drained into the superior mesenteric vein splenic vein and the portal vein so this is the blood supply of the stomach now we see the nerve supply stomach is supplied by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic fiber sympathetic fiber arise from the t6 to t10 segment of the spinal cord via the greater splenic nerves hepatic plexus and the celiac plexus of a nerve the sympathetic nerves to the stomach are a vasomotor motor to the pylorus and the inhibitory to the rest of the stomach musculature and the carry the pain sensation from the stomach so when the sympathetic st stimulation to the stomach occur it will uh, compress or close the pyloric sphincter dilate the stomach 
so it will do the gastric filling. The parasympathetic supply arises from the vagus nerve, right and the left vagus nerve through the anterior and the posterior gastric nerves. The parasympathetic supply is inhibited to the pylorus and it is motor to the stomach gastric musculature. So when it stimulates, it will cause the emptying of the stomach and it is additionally also secretomotor to the stomach so it will produce the uh, increase the secretion of a stomach. So this is about a nerve supply of a stomach. Now we see the interior of the stomach. Here I had cut already the stomach along the greater curvature and now I am exposing the stomach and we see the interior of a stomach. Now the first thing, the innermost part of the stomach will shows the mucosa. Now you can see the mucosa is thrown in the folds which is known as a gastric rugae. Now this gastric rugae are irregular in the anterior and the posterior surface but it is longitudinal along the laser curvature of the stomach. This part of a gastric rugae is known as a gastric canal. Gastric canal. Now on the surface of the mucosa you can see the small pits or a depression which can be seen clearly with the hand lens. This is known as a gastric pits which are the opening of a gastric lens. So this is first layer inner layer mucosa. Below the mucosa there is a submucosa then the muscular layer that is made up of an inner circular, outer longitudinal and additionally innermost oblique layer and the outermost is a serosa which is formed by the peritoneum. So these are the layer of the stomach and the interior of the stomach. Now the last thing we see the important applied anatomy. Now the first applied important applied the gastric ulcer. The ulcer in the stomach is known as a gastric ulcer. Gastric ulcer is common along the laser curvature of a stomach here. The reason behind it are the first one, the epithelium along the laser curvature is thin. Second, the mucosa is not tightly attached to the underlying muscular layer. Third, it is having the less abundant blood supply, anastomosis is a less. The fourth, it is having the more abundant nerve supply, so the secretion are more and producing the ulcer for. The fifth region is a gastric canal. Now the important is when we drink anything through the mouth, it passes from the lower end of the esophagus directly through the gastric canal to the lower part before it is uh, spreading into the rest of the part of the stomach. So this is the most common area which get insulted from the uh, uh, the liquid which is uh, given by the coronary. The sixth one, the wave of the contraction remains for the longer period along the laser curvature. And the last one, the infection helicobacter pylori is producing, it is common in the stomach and it is having the tendency to producing the ulcer. So these are the reason why the gastric ulcer is common along the laser curvature of the stomach. Now the remember the gastric ulcer is common in the people with the O positive blood group. Now the second important applied the gastric carcinoma. A gastric carcinoma is common along the greater curvature of the stomach. Now the carcinoma is having the tendency to spread to the other organ which is known as a metastasis. The gastric carcinoma spread through the lymphatic vessels through the thoracic duct to the left supraclavicular group of a lymph node and this group, uh, lymph node will, help, will, will get enlarged. This is known as a trozier sign and this enlarged left supraclavicular lymph node are known as a signals nodes. So it's all about the stomach. Thank you. If you like this video, like it and share with your friends and to get the regular update on the anatomy videos please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.